With farming, we're at the mercy of the weather. And with it raining, everything is wet right now. And there's no way that I'm gonna be getting anything done in my other garden spaces around the farm. I would just be splashing mud everywhere. And uh, that wouldn't be good for the soil structure. But in here, in my high tunnel, everything is nice and dry. However, I got grass and weeds everywhere in here. So before I can even think about planting anything in here, I need to do something about that. So it looks like I got my work cut out for me this morning. Recently, we've been working on a number of modifications to my high tunnel here, and I still have our tools out from that. I feel like Bob the Builder with all these tools. <laughs> but I still have a number of things to do with our high tunnel, including right here on this outside wall here, I plan to set up a gutter system that will harvest the rain from the high tunnel and then from that rain, we can just easily water the plants that will be in here. So that way it's like its own contained, self-sustaining system here with, with being able to keep the plants here and naturally water itself. In addition to that, on the two ends, I need to set up in walls. But everything that I need to do on the inside here is pretty much done. Thankfully, we're catching these before they've gone to seed. Because I don't want to spread any more seeds in here of plants that we don't want in here. Ideally, it would be so much less work for me if I would have covered this area with a silage tarp. That would have smothered the weeds and grass up from growing. But sometimes what's ideal is not reality. Because in reality, I didn't get it covered, so I'm having to deal with it. But the good news is, what I am taking out of there, my chickens can benefit from it. Oh yeah, that sounds good. Got a nice little shoulder burn while I was using the Steripo there. And as being a former bodybuilder and gym rat, I'm constantly usually thinking about creative ways to get some exercise in while I'm doing things. Why not multitask, right? Yeah. And I like to use simple tools here to help me do that. While I'm doing the farming and gardening thing, just using the simple tools and getting some exercise in at the same time. While I was giving that to the chickens, I was thinking, why not switch some things up a little bit? Let me get a different tool. Hold on a minute. One of my favorite tools is a broad fork. And it's a simple tool, but it's really effective. So instead of using a steropo, since the weeds and grass hasn't gone to seed, why not just flip everything? Yeah, let's do that.
with having a new baby in the house, it's been really hard to take care of myself. And I know you other moms out there will know that, you know, when you have this little person to take care of, the easiest thing to kind of put on the back burner is yourself. You don't get a shower when you need one and you don't necessarily brush your teeth all the time or do all the things for yourself or take all your supplements and it becomes really hard. And we can't do everything perfectly. But a few months ago, I found a really great brand of protein powder that has all clean ingredients. And it really helped me get all the protein that I need during pregnancy. And it's been great for postpartum too, because I can just mix up a shake and drink it. Not only are we conscious of what we put in our bodies, we're actually conscious of what we put on our bodies as well. And if you didn't know, your skin is the largest organ on your body. So it absorbs a lot of things. And what you wanna stay away from are things like parabens and SLS, which is a foaming agent that's in toothpaste, um, it's in shampoos. You wanna stay away from those because they're actually endocrine disruptors and they're really bad for you. So I was super excited whenever Just Ingredients came out with their personal care line. You know, we try our best to grow the best food possible for us and for other people, but it's nice to know there's other companies out there that are stepping up and they're making products that are just as good for you as you know if you made it yourself because we all know we can't do everything. So it's nice to have somewhere you can go and pick up clean products. Ah, whew. That one got my heart rate up. But oh, oh, let me show you something. Come here, check this out. All right, all right, right here. So right in here, you see this? See this? You got this layer of clay, which is deep underneath. And then right up here, you got this dark, loose stuff. So when I first started growing in this area, it was all clay, just like this right here. The stuff that was underneath the loose stuff. It was just hard compacted it. and it was hard to grow anything in here I actually tried to grow things and it just really wasn't successful but over time just working with here and here bringing in chickens in here and just working with it we're gradually able to build up the good soil this stuff that's right here on top last year we did a land sabbath in all of my garden spaces letting everything just rest but before that we grew tomatoes and cucumbers in here and I'm looking to do the same this year. Looking to continue to work on the quality of the soil here and hopefully grow even more. And all the green stuff that I gave to the chickens earlier, well, what's left here, we're just gonna blend it all up and it's just gonna also feed and add more organic matter to our soil. So let's move on to the next phase. Definitely not trying to cut my finger off here. Pulling this out. Pulling this out. I don't want to accidentally hit the lever and then definitely don't want that. Nope. Nope. None of that. <laughs> Alrighty. Let's see, that's on there pretty good. So let's pull this off. And all that with some of the grass that didn't get blended up decided to hang on to the tiller here cultivator here all right let's pop the pin back on
Alright, so I'm not a no-till farmer. I'm a low-till farmer. Now, I know that there are some people out there that they are pretty radical about their views of no-tilling. It's almost like they have this no-till religion or something. Now I do admit with tilling, especially modern tilling, that it does disturb organisms in the soil and it does stir up dormant weed seeds and bring those to the surface. However, tilling can be beneficial. And for some gardeners, a lot of gardeners, especially those who are starting areas and spaces to garden in for the first time, most people don't have these huge mounds of compost and topsoil they, could, they can just dump in an area to start their garden off without having to till or this big budget that they can just pay to have dump truck loads of compost brought in to start their garden. Most people don't have that. And in many of those cases, tilling can be and is beneficial for help aerating the soil, help loosen it up so moisture can get in there, help loosen things so you can get some seeds and plants going in there, especially if you have heavy clay. You definitely need to do something about it. And for me personally, whenever I'm considering any matter, I look to the Bible for answers. And that includes matters of teal or no teal. And I know that sounds crazy. Who in the world will look to the Bible for answers on whether you should teal or not teal? Well, actually, there's a lot of agricultural principles in the Bible. Most people lived agrarian lifestyles. And that's the lifestyle that I really feel like we're supposed to live. And with that, in Genesis, it talks about when God put Adam in the garden. He put him in there to teal and to keep it. That word actually can be better translated as to work it, to manage it, to dress it, to take care of it. And it wasn't until after Adam and Eve sinned that man had to teal through laborious efforts to get the food that he needed. I think that in the garden it was more of like a permaculture environment where they didn't have to teal, that Adam and Eve could, could really do a no teal. Adam just looked over it, took care of things, but after the sin, that's when you see numerous verses and indications that man had to work hard through the sweat of his brow to produce food for him to eat and his family to eat. And the Bible also mentions that in the coming government of God to this earth, that tilling will be done then too. So, do I think that we need to go no till? In some cases, yes. But do I think that we need to till in some cases? Yes, I do. And speaking of tilling, tilling's gonna help me to get these nutrients into the soil to help feed our plants. Here we have wood ash. Here we have some Redmond salt and soil conditioner. And then right here we just have a nitrogen base general fertilizer. Wood ash, on sparingly. Woo, that wind's kicked up. Woo! Started off rainy, and the wind came in, blew the clouds away, and the sun's been playing peekaboo all day, and now it's just windy. Ah. Redmond combo here. Hopefully it doesn't blow away. Not the ideal day to do it. Wind blowing.
bed, 30 inches wide, and there's the walkway in between. go with these it was a lot of work getting this high tunnel ready for these plants but with making this much progress I wanted to end the day with some plants in the ground There you go, Micah. You got some excellent holes going there, man. Way to go. Thank you for putting the plants out for me, Josiah. Well. Got that hole nice and deep. Plants slide right in. Bang. And thankfully, we were able to end the day with two rows of plants in the ground. And since I don't have the end walls finished yet, we set up low tunnels to protect our plants from the cold temperatures at night. Man, I actually got sore <laughs> from all that work in the garden uh, by the sweat of my brow, trying to make sure you people have everything you need to eat. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I appreciate it. <laughs> Food is my love language, so feed me good, and then I know you love me. I look forward to having tomatoes and cucumbers from there. It's just like, mmm. Uh, but all that work, whew, it was a little bit of work doing all uh, that. It was. You did a lot of work. <laughs> It must have been nice to be Adam and Eve in the garden where God planted everything for him and Adam all he had to do was just take care of things, watch over it. He didn't have to do everything by the sweat of his brow, working with thorns and thistles and, and getting cuts and bruises and everything else. Just get whatever you want to eat and eat it. It must have been nice, yeah. Just imagine being in the Garden of Eden with me and it just would be <laughs> and just enjoying all the fruit and then walking around and just enjoying it and then yeah, I know, I, I, I know where this is going. I know where this is going. It yeah. would be nice. Let's just cut it off there, please, sir. 
But because of Adam and Eve and them eating the forbidden fruit and actually the sins of us all, we all have to work much, much harder than I think God originally intended, especially harder than Adam and Eve had to work in the garden for sure, dealing with all the things that we have to deal with, like compacted soil. So we have to get out there and have to get work out there hard. and work hard. So it is what it is. And, and for some people, it's like if you say the word, Deal. It's like it's a forbidden word, like it's a cuss word or something. You say, and it's like, it's, just, it's like, what? What? But, but there's a balance with everything. Just like God's a God of mercy and justice, there's a balance there. Trying to find the balance with gardening too, with tealing when it needs to happen, and then no tealing or low tealing. When that needs to happen too is something that we're striving for and i do want to mention that there is a big difference between also conventional farming and all the monocropping over tillage uh, no rotational grazing all that where they're just just taking 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 from the land that's that's not right either that's a, a an imbalance each is an imbalance you go to one extreme to another and we all get caught up on different ideologies and philosophies and we don't we we lack balance when we do that yep. the key is balance. And listening to you talk about all that, it just makes me think about, you know, the ground and how hard it is. And, you know, we have to work it. We have to bring it into subjection of what we want it to be. But we do that so it can bear fruit. That's interesting to think about, yeah, because of the conditions of, of the world now and the earth now. They're things have hardened. been hardened and isn't easy to work with so to get it to be worked with you have to work it and put it in subjection to to make it fruitful and nourish it i mm. mean essentially you know we need to nourish the land just like we need to be nourished so we can be fruitful exactly right because we can be hardened and yes. god has to put us in subjection <laughs> for us to be fruitful and our hearts have wow. to be softened this has gotten way deeper than i originally intended this to be <laughs> <laughs> but just some things to think about. But remember, 